If you've been here before, you may remember a few months ago I put out a video about some rare and unusual tapes I'd collected over the years. There were things in there like the American Airlines in-flight entertainment from the 1960s and the world's smallest pre-recorded music album. Well, this video is a sequel, but it doesn't just feature tapes. I'm not going to call it Oddy Tapes 2. I'm going to take up a viewer suggestion from the last one and call it Auditors. Now, picking up where that one left off, you may remember in the previous video, I featured the first pre-recorded music release on DCC for 20 years. Well, I also showed you my DCC 175 machine and mentioned how it was knackered, for want of a better term. All the writing had come off because the plastic had gone sticky and apparently the belt had come off as well, I found out later on. And I couldn't charge it because they no longer make the rechargeable batteries for these. Well, Dr. DCC, the guy who made that tape that I featured in the video, offered to repair it for me. And unsurprisingly, I took him up on his offer and this is what came back a few weeks later. It looks as good as new. He's used a number of parts off a donor machine to repair mine. You can see I've got all my writing back now and it's not stuck. Sticky, and he's also given me a new inline remote control, done a remanufactured battery for me as well, so I can now finally charge this thing up and use it outside the house. He made a video about this, and I'll link to it in the video description. And apparently, replacing the belts requires unsoldering quite a few parts, which is a bit of a hassle. So I'm glad he did it rather than myself. It looked a little bit complicated. And talking of complicated, one thing I should have mentioned in the past, but I neglected to was the marvel of miniaturization that is this record and playhead would you believe it has 40 different heads in there there's 18 for dcc recording 18 for dcc playback and another four for analog tapes to play in both directions it's an auto reverse machine but it doesn't swap the heads around it could be argued that the dcc 175 is the most sophisticated of all the dcc players it's certainly one of the rarest there weren't many of these made and there's probably even less around now so it's great to have one that's still functioning but i'm not really here to talk about the dcc 175 even though I have done for a couple of minutes, I'm here to talk about what else came in the box when he sent it back to me. And it's another version of Jeremy Hyden's Blue Wicked album, but this time on an even rarer format than Minidisc and DCC. He's one-upped himself and released the first ever pre-recorded commercial album on El Cassette. And if you haven't heard of it before, El Cassette is a high quality audio tape system which uses quarter inch tape inside a large cassette body for excellent quality sound. Introduced to the market in 1976 but wasn't a success. Now I did a video on it about three years or so ago and in that video I also featured DCC and that is where the connection comes in because Dr. DCC saw that video, decided he also wanted to get hold of an El Cassette machine, subsequently did and now has produced this album on the format. Now the idea of an artist releasing a small number of promotional copies of their album on unusual formats as a way to generate publicity is something that I've championed for quite a while now. I've mentioned it over the years in various videos and in this typo laden tweet from January 17 where I suggest they might want to think about realising a handful of copies of their album on on Minidisc DCC or El Cassette. And just a couple of months ago, somebody asked me what format would I like to resurrect? And I said, El Cassette, brilliant quality analog format that never had a single album released on it. And whilst that might have been accurate back in August, it's inaccurate now because there is a single album released on the format and I'm holding it in my hands now. So let me get it out of the shrink wrap and we'll have a good look at it. Now, of course, with no template to go on as to what an album release on this format would look like, they had free reign to decide. And I think done an excellent job here. This is how I would imagine a pre-recorded El Cassette looking if the format had ever taken off with pre-recorded albums. I'd certainly have collected these. Look at the label on there. That's an excellent piece of work as well. Just perfect all round really this is what you'd expect we've got tape coming out of the top there on an El cassette of course they go this way up so that label is the right way round and uh, of course we've got a label on both sides there and you'll notice at the corners here the orange right protect tabs have been pushed in to stop it accidentally being recorded over now getting hold of blank El cassettes isn't always easy of course they don't make them anymore so you're dealing with new old stock on ebay and they do show up from time to time but often at astronomical prices and then once you've got them you'll need to disassemble them to apply a level of lubrication inside on the reels otherwise they'll squeak because the original grease or whatever it is that's supposed to be in there has dried out by now so let's have a listen and see how we get on Take away this message we see. 
and I'm happy to report there's no issue with squeaking. The recording has been done to a high standard, but I should mention, of course, this is electronic type music, so it will have originated from a digital master. If you want to hear more from the artist, I'll have links to him in the video description text box. Now, because this hasn't come from a tape duplication facility, they're using standard length blank tapes. This is a 60 minute tape, which means 30 minutes per side. I think they've rearranged the tracks around a little bit to best fit them on there because on side A, you're just left with two minutes and 50 odd of blank space at the end and side B has a minute and a bit or something. So very well done, well thought out, well put together. There'll be links to information about this in the video description text box as there will for all the other things in this video. But let's move on to the next thing that I want to show you. A couple of years ago I made a video about the stereo micro cassette and in that video I described how in the film A Clockwork Orange they'd used mini cassettes as a prop to depict the audio format of the future. Now in reality no music was ever released on mini cassettes however as far as micro cassettes go well there were a handful of titles that were sold mail order for a very brief amount of time for people to play in their Shogun music muff. This was a set of headphones with a built-in micro cassette player. Now because I'm always on the lookout for a set of those cassettes I've got a saved search in eBay which looks for stereo micro cassette. As yet it hasn't found any of those however it's led me to the next item that I'm going to show you and it comes from a chap in Russia who customizes cassettes and he's made a prop replica of the tape that's used in a clockwork orange. Now, of course, this isn't an official release. This has been done by one chap to appeal to a very select audience, but he's done a really good job. It's got a printed J card in there listing what's on the tape. You can see the label on the tape. It does look like it's come from a proper release. You wouldn't know this was just one bloke putting these together. Let's compare it to the one out of the movie. Now, as you can see, very similar designs. Of course, we've got different track titles on here. He does do a couple of different versions of this. And of course, the one in the film was a mini cassette, whereas this is a micro cassette. But being a micro cassette means I can actually play it. So I'm going to get my micro cassette machine out and we'll see if this really does have the four seasons on it and if it's in stereo. So let's have a listen. And spot the schoolboy error. The tape was the wrong way around. You see, on a micro cassette, the tape goes from the right hand spool to the left hand one, which is opposite what would happen on a normal compact cassette. Let's give it another go. <laughs> Yes, it's all there, it's in stereo, and it's exactly as stated on the inlay and on the label. It's very well recorded on top of that, as good as I've heard a ferric micro cassette tape sound. Now, of course, this is just a prop replica, but it's always nice to have a fully functioning prop replica as well. I'll link to his eBay store in the video description text box. Now, let's move on to something a little bit older. You may recognise these three inch reels of tape. They've appeared in a couple of my videos over the years. The first time I showed them was in the video for the Sabamobile, which was a portable tape player, which had large cartridges, which contained two three inch reels of tape. Most recently, you'll have seen them in the mail call video. That was a video about a long distance communication system where you sent your messages through the post on tapes and that's what these three inch reels were for in an era when it was prohibitively expensive for most people to make international or long distance phone calls you could still hear from relatives you just had to record your audio onto tape and send it to them through the post they were most popular in the 1960s now, after the first video, when I mentioned that these were old used tapes and had some previous recordings on them, I was asked if I could play back some of those recordings. So I'm going to do that now. However, these tapes were reused multiple times. And this one starts off with a recording from the early 1970s of a woman practicing a really dry speech. I can't promise you a sunny day by the sea, but I can promise you a day that will be both interesting and informative. Your copy of the Midland Access organisation chart should give you some idea of the status of this department within the Midland Bank Group. OK, so let me cut in here because it is pretty boring. I'll explain what was going on. She was practising a speech she was going to use on a coach taking school children from London down to the Access office 
before the launch of the Access card in the UK. So I could date it to sometime around about October 1972 or just before because it seemed like it was just ready to launch. And she was taking them to Southend on Sea, which is where the headquarters were. Hence the hilarious joke about I can't promise you a sunny day at the seaside. Now, I want to move on to the older recordings because those are more interesting. There's somebody that's living in Canada that's a lady with two children, her husband's in the forces over there, in the Air Force. And then there's another family over in the UK and they're communicating back and forth using these tapes. The thing that I found most interesting about this was the way they were discussing various health issues at the time. Let's start off by weight. How heavy do you think you'd have to be to have to go into hospital? And uh, Carrie's dad is out there hospital now. He wasn't sick. He just had uh, to lose a lot of weight. He'd really got um, gone up to 198 pounds. So, and they put him on a crash diet. But I think he lost about 30 pounds, which helps. If everyone over 197 pounds nowadays had to go into hospital, the hospitals would be very busy indeed. Now let's move on to the subject of teeth. And when they're talking about teeth here and having them done, they're talking about having them removed. I'm glad you're all fixed up with your teeth now, Mum. I know it takes a bit of getting used to. And uh, I'm sorry to hear you've lost so much weight. Although maybe you aren't so sorry. Um, I've got to get my teeth fixed. And I'm seriously thinking of having it done in the next two or three weeks. So that'll probably put me out of action for a while. But I'd like to get it done before I seriously think about getting a job. Now, given the evidence of what's going on on this tape, she's got her children there singing songs and she's communicating back with her parents. I can't put this woman as any older than in her 40s and she's having all her teeth taken out. Now, let's hear what Dougie back in the UK thinks about that. Dougie is Uncle Dougie and he seems like a quite a fun guy. And I was listening to Molly talk about your teeth. Well, when you get them in, they'll be glistening and all the guys that are on the neighbourhood, there's you'll have to watch out, though, you know. It'll be flashing. Right, I'll leave this one there and we'll come back to Dougie later on in the video. I've got to fess up about something though. The machine you're looking at on screen, of course, wasn't the one that those tracks were being played back through. It was through this device here. I played them on this two track reel to reel recorder at seven and a half inches per second, recorded the output into a PCM digital recorder, and then put that into Audacity, slowed down the speed, reversed one of the tracks, and adjusted the volume levels. Here's what it sounded like while I was listening to it. And back to the present day, a video that I put out regarding endless loop tapes sparked something in the imagination of Gerald Clues. After he'd seen the video, he got in touch with me to tell me about his project called Progressica. He's a drum teacher and a proficient drummer of course based in Germany but this Progressica thing is something that he's got together with his friends they've come up with this idea of making tracks that just feature the best part of the track so it's got a 40 seconds or less for each track he's put four of these onto a two minute endless loop tape and he sent me a copy I just thought it was a, such a bizarre thing I had to show it to you and uh, let's have a quick listen to it I'm always amazed when anything that I've done has any kind of knock-on effect in the real world. So when Gerald got in touch to tell me about this, I just had to show it to you. Again, links in the video description. Now, the final thing involves hip-hop and vinyl. I was contacted by the hip-hop group Jazz Spastics. They wanted to know, would I like a copy of their instrumental hip-hop record called Scratch and Sniff? Now, the unusual thing about this album is that we've got 17 tracks on here and each of them correspond with a smell. And the smell is in the Scratch and Sniff book that accompanies the album. So when you reach that particular track, you scratch the appropriate part on the page and you'd smell 
the spell that you need to for that particular record. Interesting idea, except I don't have a sense of smell. I'm afraid it died off a few years ago, and despite numerous operations and seeing the best specialists, it won't come back. So I said to them, I'm probably not the right guy to review this, and they said, well, don't worry about it. The reason we really contacted you was because we've used some audio off one of your old videos on a couple of our tracks. I did a video a while ago about the RCA Victor tape cartridge system. In a way, it's a precursor to the L cassette. Now, after I'd done that video, I uploaded the whole of this demo tape, and they used some samples from that on their Midnight Method album. The intros on side A and side B use it. In fact, let's just have a listen to one of those. Say, that was great. Notice, notice the second speaker over here in the lid for really big stereo sound. Like this. Mm, not bad. Which reminds me, play some more stereo music. These recordings will always retain their original quality. Let's hear more. So you can't believe how happy it's made me to hear that some samples off a demo tape I uploaded to YouTube have found their way onto a vinyl record. Anyway, Jazz Spastic sent me their back catalogue and a nice cassette, and it really is the kind of stuff that I like listening to, which is a, a nice coincidence, kind of mellow hip-hop, a little bit like People Under the Stairs, very clever lyrics. I mean, if you're into this kind of stuff, please just go and have a listen. I'll put a link in the video description. And that brings us nicely to the end of this video, in which you've seen a functioning prop replica from a future that didn't happen, the first ever album released on L cassette, and a two minute endless loop tape that contains four songs. I think we should finish this one off by letting good old Uncle Dougie sing us out. And I want to buy a man put the ladder there, but the ladder was a lot too short. So I climbed out of the window, and upon my soul up the telegraph pole, I climbed, God, if my face is black as coal, hurrying, scurrying, I thought I'd never reach land. So I run along the wire with my shirt on fire and my shirt tail in my hand. <laughs> well, what do you think of that, eh?